So here's an example of uh, solving uh, an initial value problem using um, straight line solutions. So I've chosen a matrix that we've worked with several times. And, uh, and so here's a typical initial value problem. Here's our differential equation. And here's our initial condition. As I've done on a previous screencast, uh, and as you can do yourselves, uh, I can find the eigenvalues by setting up what is called the characteristic equation. Characteristic. Sorry about the writing. Equation. And uh, uh, that leads to what is called the characteristic polynomial. So here's the characteristic polynomial. Characteristic polynomial, uh, when factored, uh, since it can be factored, and if not, we'd have to use the quadratic formula, reveals two eigenvalues. And then, as was shown in a previous screencast, for each eigenvalue, there's a computation that we make to find an eigenvector. The eigenvectors are not unique. I could be using 2, 2 as an eigenvector. Any scalar multiple of one eigenvector is another eigenvector corresponding to the same eigenvalue. In general, we try to use eigenvectors with as small a denomination as possible and with as few negative signs as possible. So for example, if this were minus 1, minus 1, I would want to uh, multiply it by a minus 1 to work with positive numbers. Corresponding to the eigenvalue 2, I have shown previously how we find the eigenvector minus 2, 1. We could also have used 2 minus 1, uh, or any scalar multiple of this would also be an eigenvalue. Then, on a previous uh, screencast, I also showed why functions of this form, vector-valued functions of this form, where this coefficient 4 uh, is, an, is an eigenvalue and for this matrix, and this vector is an eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue 4 for this matrix. And uh, if that's true, I've demonstrated previously that uh, this function will solve this linear system. Similarly, y2 will do the same thing where it's e to the uh, t, where uh, the coefficient of t is the number here, the uh, second eigenvalue, and uh, minus 2, 1 is the corresponding eigenvector. These are called straight line solutions because e to the 4, t is just a scalar. For every value of t, I get some real number here. That real number multiplying 1, 1 simply stretches 1, 1 by some amount. When t is large, it makes it very long. When t is 0, it's a 1. And as t goes to minus infinity, uh, this number goes to 0, and the solution approaches the origin. Same thing here. This is a straight line solution. This is a uh, parametric description of a set of points that live on a ray that uh, starts at the origin, does not include the origin, but starts there, goes through the point minus 2, 1, and continues out in that direction. By definition, independent eigenvalues will have uh, independent eigenvectors, but it doesn't hurt to take a look at them. At time 0, y1 is at 1, 1, and y2 is at minus 2, 1. These two vectors are linearly independent, meaning they are not scalar multiples of each other. Now that I have two solutions uh, to the differential equation with uh, initial conditions at those two solutions that are linearly independent, I can say that the general solution will be of this form. Every possible curve that goes through that plane satisfying this differential equation will have this form. I can find a k1 and a k2 to make that happen. When we fill in the numbers, I'm looking for an initial condition um, so that at time 0 I pass to the point 1, 4, 
And so I've got to find the k1 and k2 to do that. Let's just, it's easy algebra for us, but let's go to the next slide and, and uh, finish that up. I'm sorry. So here we are uh, one more time rewriting what we're after. We're looking for a K1 and a K2 so that we'll satisfy the initial condition 1, 4. And this is just two equations and two unknowns. The K1 multiplies the 1 and the K2 multiplies the minus 2 to give us a K1 minus 2K2 and that has to equal a 1. K1 multiplies this, K2 multiplies this. I have a <clears throat> K1 plus a K2 has to equal 4. <clears throat> um, I like to do it this way. I'm going to make this equation negative, multiply through by minus 1, and then add, and the uh, K1s will cancel. This will become a positive 2K2 added here. I'll get 3K2s. I'll have a minus 1 and a 4. I'll give me a 3. Divide through by 3. I've got K2 equals to 1. Taking K2 equals to 1 and plugging it into this equation, I have a K1 plus a 1 equals 4. K1 is a 3. And so here is our solution of the initial value problem. Oops. This is a differential equation. I'm sorry, this is a linear uh, vector valued function that solves the differential equation. Each one of these individually solves the differential equation. Uh, a scalar multiple of one of them solves the differential equation. And a sum of two solutions is also a solution. So this is our general solution. It would be nice if I could draw a graph of this for you but that's going to have to wait until I have some better technology. Okay, I hope this helps. Good luck. Bye-bye.